I'm just going to say it outright. It's been a fun day. I just noticed that some new fundraising numbers have come in for the federal parties, and with no shock whatsoever, the liberals are doing horribly. In a relative sense, they're effectively broke at this point. Yes, they're bringing in millions of dollars, but compared to the conservatives, they cannot mount a federal election campaign. This is the real reason that there isn't going to be a snap election anytime soon. Trudeau isn't motivated to do it. Jagmeet Singh definitely isn't motivated to do it because he's even broker than Justin Trudeau is. He's only benefited from the fact that nobody expects the NDP to do very well at all. So, you know, he only has to compete for maybe 40 or 50 ridings in a real way where Trudeau has to try and compete across the entire country because the Liberals are supposed to be the natural governing party of Canada and he does not have the money to do it at all. In fact, the Liberals' fundraising numbers are closer right now to the NDP than they are to the Conservatives. So here are the numbers right here. $20.5 million has been raised by Pure Poly and Conservatives so far in the year 2024. That's the first and second quarter's fundraising numbers. Uh, Justin Trudeau and the Liberals have only raised $6.9 million, and Jagmeet Singh and the NDP have raised $2.5 million. I want to check my math on this, uh, but I'm pretty sure I am right that I checked it a little bit ago. So the Liberals have only raised 33.6% of what the Conservatives have raised, but how much have the uh, how much have the the NDP raised of the proportion of what the uh, the Liberals have brought in? Yeah, and the NDP have brought in 36% of what the uh, Liberals have brought in, which means that the NDP's brought in like you know 15% or so of or like 13% of what the Conservatives have brought in. Absolutely pathetic, even more pathetic for the Liberals, who again are competing for second place at this point with the Bloc Québécois and the NDP. The, there's just no bright spots right now for the Liberal Party. The last polling that came out, it had the Conservative Party ahead by not just 19 points. The Liberals were within the margin of error with the NDP. I still, I still think they're going to beat the NDP because never underestimate the incompetence of Jagmeet Singh and the New Democrats, because the problem is, is that they are a party who does not have the money and know how to actually mount proper campaigns. The Liberals do, so it doesn't matter how high the NDP polls, they are going to absolutely scuff it and just fall down to like 16%, 17% on election day, because they're terrible at getting their own people to vote for them. They're the problem is they rely very heavily on that 18 to 29 year old demographic, a very low propensity voting group where the liberals rely on 60 plus voters. That's where they disproportionately do well. So they have a voting block that actually does show up. But the conservatives benefit the most because not only do they have the most money, everybody likes them across all demographics. They're in first place on all demographics, women, men, age groups, different minority groups. They're winning all of them. But they also are disproportionately popular with middle-aged people who are the largest voting uh, portion in the country who also are very likely to show up and vote. It's fantastic for them. And in response to all this, the liberals are just still flailing around trying to attack Pierre Polyev with very just weak stuff. It's just complete weak sauce. Here's what the liberals posted just today, uh, 25 minutes ago. It says, Pure Polyev has no plan to solve the housing crisis, and that really sucks. And he says, young people can't afford a home, that really sucks, trying to go after Polyev as, as if he is being dismissive, and then listing some things he voted against. It's it's stupid. That's all I can really say. It's stupid thinking that this is going to be a solid attack line. When you've been in government for nine years, and you haven't done anything for housing, in fact, housing has like doubled in price over the past nine years, and you're going to say, we have a plan, but Mr. Polyev, he doesn't have a plan. He just has rhetoric. Like, yeah, he's not in government, and he voted against your policies because they're bad policies. There's nothing wrong with these, you know, housing uh, housing saving programs. He probably voted against them because you guys tried to package them up with a bunch of other stupid policies that he opposed. But again, he can't take any of the blame because you know, spoiler alert, he wasn't in government at all during this entire time. Nobody is convinced by this. But now in the, like, you know, the afterglow of knowing that 
they're going to probably lose the next election. The liberals online are in a bit of a tizzy, and they're trying to find a new attack line on Pure Polya. This is actually generally how politics works in general when it comes to marketing strategies. It's tried out in the trenches first, a lot of online anonymous accounts and lower level MPs will try a few attack lines and see if they work. And then they'll kind of filter up to the party uh, brass and then they'll be putting it out as like official attack lines. You always kind of try them in a small market first and then you bring them up to uh, being like an official party sort of position and strategy. And now the new left-wing Canadian strategy on social media is to call pure poly of weird because apparently it's working really well for Kamala Harris going after Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, so the liberals are going to try it in Canada. It's not actually working well for the for Kamala Harris in the U.S. because it's only bringing attention to the fact that she's a fairly weird person too. But here's a quick mashup of all these clips of the media in the United States saying weird in regards to the Republicans. And then I want to compare it to all the left-wing Canadians on social media now trying to make fetch happen and use the weird moniker in regards to the conservatives and Pierre Polya. But here's this mashup. Some of what he and his running mate are saying, well, it's just plain weird. <laughs> These guys are just weird. That's who they are. Uh, as weird and creepy uh, as J.D. Vance. Super weird idea from J.D. Vance. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's quite weird. They're just plain weird. Just plain weird. Just plain weird. That stuff is weird. They come across weird, and then they start being weird. Yeah, they're weird. Being a really weird. He's such a weirdo. Donald Trump and his weirdo running mate are weird. Deeply and profoundly weird. They are weird. These Republicans just being weird. It's just weird. It's really weird. Republican weirdness goes even deeper. And by the way, this happens with all parties in all politics, no matter what country you're in. I hate it. I hate this garbage where you're emailed in the morning uh, about what talking points to use for specific issues. The great thing is I'm currently in British Columbia helping the British Columbia Conservative Party. They don't do that, which is great. But you get a lot of other parties on the left and the right where they're like, just use the word weird a lot for our opponent. Just use the word like irresponsible or whatever. And that will be like, frankly, it happened on the federal level with the word wacko. Everyone started using the word wacko. I even used it a couple times, but it was a it was an actual good attack line. Good attack lines will be used organically. Wacko wasn't something where they, anyone was ordered to say it, but it worked. But parties and people, whether they're told to directly or indirectly, they just kind of assume that that's the new line, will start using it. The weird line in the U.S. is so bad and especially that one clip of Tim Waltz there from Ohio, uh, or, I, or it was, I think it was a different state, but it was such a bad use of it. It's so artificial when he's like, they say weird things, then they start acting weird. Like he's just trying to jam the word into his clip as much as possible. A lot of these people's, their points don't really call for their the use of the word. And they like bend the script to try and jam in the word weird. And it frankly just makes them look weird. But now we have the trend migrating up into Canada. We have all of these popular leftist accounts using the whole weird line. Oh, pure Polyev is weird. Look at look at Polyev standing there, you know, fiddling around a little bit because they're waiting for an event with Vladimir Zelensky to start. Yeah, well, look, he, he's he's like adjusting his suit a bit, give someone's a thumbs up. Yeah, this is pure Polyev. This is peak weird in politics. Uh, I'll move up a little bit here. Uh, Polyev is weird. Christopher Burns is using this thing. And these are popular accounts. They're getting thousands of likes, thousands of reach or hundreds of retweets and comments. This is what they're trying. This is the new line they're going to try and push in Canada, pretending that this can work. Uh, we have the, the stupid Paul Iov thing. It, it, it's such, it's so clunky. Uh, there's this one account, Roddy. I love seeing his posts. I don't follow him, but he pops up a lot. And I always find that he has the clunkiest version of whatever the liberals or NDP's new talking points is. Here's another person saying, Polyev is the Canadian version of J.D. Vance. This guy is weird. Why? Why? He's holding wood showing inflation. He's showing the he's showing how inflation works. Oh, I, he has glasses, so they remind him of Millhouse or whatever. Ugh, you know, Polyev is weird. And then showing a cartoon that has like nothing to do with Polyev supposedly being weird. Um, uh, and like some other stuff, you know, J.D. Vance is weird. Pure Polyev is weirder. 
this guy from some stra liberal strategy firm. And so, yes, there are a lot of liberal strategists who are already trying to march out at this point, retail it around, see if it can work. And if the liberals or the new Democrats should be using it, it's not it's not a good point. And he's like, you know, a big mashup of conservatives and people that leftists are trying to attach the conservatives to and saying this person under the name, the rude cat, you want to elect weirdo pure politics? Do you want a government run by his strange group of weird MPs with their weird anti-Canadian ideas? Are you interested in having a prime minister that hangs out with the uh, uh, Fring Fringer insurrectionist move? I don't even know what this person trying to say. Uh, whatever. These like I wish, and this is a person running a parody account of Danielle Smith's calling you know P, like pure poly of weird. And then Mark Garrettson, one of the most desperate liberal MP, saying, "Just your friendly reminder." that just last week, the National Post was celebrating Pure Polyev as the J.D. Vance of the North. And th to be fair, that is a kind of a point against the National Post. Stop comparing Canadian politicians to American politicians. There's really no equivalent for a lot of American politicians in Canada. And frankly, J.D. Vance, other than some slight similarities in their personal backgrounds in terms of Pure Polyev being adopted and JD still growing up in a broken home, which is not equivalent because like Pure Polyev and his brother grew up in a two parent household that doesn't make any sense. But whatever, I, I don't like it when people start trying to always need to be like, you know, they're trying to find like, oh, this thing's happening in America and this is the equivalent in Canada. Like, oftentimes there's no equivalent, guys. But Mark Garrettson here by calling out the idea that he's been compared to JD Vance is starting to try, uh, start up the weird engine inside the liberal party so that they can start calling pure poly of weird it's a bad attack because justin trudeau and the liberals have not done a good job in office and when you haven't done a good job in office when everything is worse after nine years of your government you can't just go to your opponent and say he's weird let's pretend that pure poly of is weird he's actually like very extremely normal he is an extremely normal politician He's the type of guy who who makes you think he probably reads books at night before he goes to sleep. He's not a particularly like energetic and eccentric man. And so going after him is weird, even if he was weird, is weak because you're bad at your jobs. If the liberals said, you know, on these five points, we've done really well. And the vast majority of Canadians could at least somewhat agree with that. Then you can go after your opponent as a bit odd, you know, a bit of an odd ball. You know, we'll stick with the consistency that Justin Trudeau gives us. The problem is the consistent effect of the liberals on Canada has been making things worse. And when everything is worse, your opponent being weird is not a, a, a real attack. That's the problem. That's also probably why it's going to fail in the U.S. When Kamala Harris, who is objectively much weirder than J.D. Vance, J.D. Vance is really not that weird. When you're a bad vice president, when your administration has done a bad job on pretty much every area of public policy, it's hard to just go after your opponents is weird. It just doesn't work. That's why I think that in the United States, that's that talking point's going to die off. I think it's actually going to start being used a lot in Canada as time goes on. It's already being used a lot. When I looked up pure poly of weird or poly of weird, and I just start scrolling down through all the recent usages of it, it's like, it's like dozens and dozens of posts every single hour. If the liberals, the, they really want to be the Democrats in the United States, because at least the Democrats are somewhat competent in running campaigns compared to the liberals, I guarantee they try to adopt it or adopt something like it to use against Polyev. It's not going to work. It's not going to work in the US. It's not going to work in Canada. And it's all motivated by the fact that the liberals are clearly not catching a moment. Their fundraising numbers are down. Their polling numbers are down. Even Justin Trudeau, when you pull him against other liberals for the liberal leadership, comes third place behind Christian Freeland, a charisma vacuum. And Mark Carney, who nobody knows, nobody cares about who Mark Carney is. He's only considered like the more competent, stable option compared to Trudeau and Freeland, which is why he polls well. People don't know a single thing about the guy. He also has every attack open to him the, that Mark, uh, that Michael Ignatiev had. He's lived in the UK for a large portion of his life. He hasn't really been that invested in Canada, so he wouldn't be a very smart choice to put in, put in as the prime minister. It just looks like the party's trying to bring in a ringer from not only like outside the party, but outside the country. It would be a horrible look. And so when Trudeau's literally pulling third in his own party, 
guys, turn off the lights, end it now. Just find a way of calling a snap election. Even if you lose, it would be better for the health of the Liberal Party to lose now than hold on for dear life. Really dig the claws into your desks and wait until you're removed in October of 2025. It's the same problem that ended up killing off, since I've been BC, a good BC reference. It's what killed off the Social Credit Party in British Columbia when Bill Vanderzam stepped down as a leader, and then they just appointed a new person to lead the party and be premier, and that person didn't immediately call snap election, and they held on for dear life to the last second. People resented them, and that meant that they wouldn't be willing to come back around to the party after the election. They had burned all the bridges. I think the liberals have a little bit more lasting power than social credit, even if they do hold on, but they could be end up being in the woods for a couple of election cycles just simply from having such a contempt for the Canadian people's public opinion about them. Everyone doesn't like Trudeau, but they're willing to just treat you like you're stupid and just keep motoring through, acting like everything's fantastic and okay. Nobody will ever trust these people again with power, at least for the next eight years if they don't end up calling an early election and just easing everyone's pain by having it end faster than it would have. Anyways, that's it for me today, guys. If you want to donate to my legal fund, it's in the description below. It's the Give, Send, Go link. Uh, I'm being sued by a Chinese billionaire for defamation or myself, the National Telegraph. It's nonsense. They have no point. They haven't even filed any evidence in the last two and a half years that this case has been going on. So if you live in Canada, obviously, you can donate to that Give, Send, Go campaign. And if you're in British Columbia, I'd urge you to donate to the Abbotsford South Riding Association. We're collecting money to beat the BC NDP and get David Eby out of office. It is easily the most far left government in Canada right now, provincially speaking. And so if you guys live in BC, if you donate $100, you get $75 back in a tax credit. So it only costs you $25 to give the Conservatives $20, uh, $100 so that we can beat the NDP. Link below if you want to donate to Abbotsford South. We're going to be distributing money to ridings that need it by taking it in here first, getting ourselves fully funded, and then putting it out to the ridings that need it, who we know that have, like, have a good chance of winning. Anyways, that should be it for me today, guys. Have a good one.